Hi, hello. This is section 4.4, part 1, or day 1. And this whole section is going to be about factoring. Uh, earlier we were graphing quadratics. And again, remember, quadratic is just an x squared equation. We graphed them so far. That was the main thing. Now we're going to start to factor. So we're going to take like an x squared and break it into 2x to the first, two linear right um and so th the second one actually is not a quadratic but it's just a different type of factoring called the gcf where you divide out a four from both parts so two different types of factoring in today's video okay so i want to start with like what does the word factor mean so i usually ask students that and they, they literally have no idea it's just like mm, mm, no clue right they look confused or whatever so factoring um a couple things one uh is it you think back to like factoring 40 way back in the day you probably like broke 40 into 4 times 10 and then 4 breaks into 2 times 2 and 10 breaks into 2 times 5 okay so basically one of the ways to think of factoring is reversing multiplication so that 40 actually breaks down into all these little things multiplied together so that's factoring would be undoing that multiplication okay and so in terms of polynomials Right, when you multiply polynomials, you do the FOIL process. So you multiply those to get x squared. Multiply the outer two to get 6x. The inner two to get 4x. And the last two to get 24. Okay, and so when we're done, we combine our like terms there. So we get x squared plus 10x plus 24. Okay, and so... I do this because what we're going to do next is the reverse. So we're going to start here and break it apart. And the idea is the x squared means we're going to have x and x here. And then the other two numbers in the back when we factor have to multiply to the 24 like they do when we're doing FOIL. And then they have to add up to this 10 because in the FOIL process you have these two that come together to make the 10x. So when we, when we factor this, we're going to take 24 and look at all the things that multiply to 24, right? So 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, okay? but we're going to use the pair that adds up to 10, right? So that this thing, when we factor, we're going to make the two little binomials, put x and x here, and then the two numbers that multiply to 24 and add up to 10 go there and there, okay? And keep in mind that they're equal, right? So like like this factored thing down here, these two things multiplied together is equal to what we started with. And that's, that's all factoring means is to split it apart. And when you're done, you'll have a bunch of stuff that multiplies together to give you what you started with. All right, so, um, yeah, here's basically a, a basic example. Um, get it jotted down on the notes. If you know how to do it, that's great. Pause the video and, and do it. If not, uh, you can kind of just watch. All right, so to factor in this case, um, we're going to make two little linear factors, and we're going to use x and x here because that is, if we were foiling, that would give us the x squared. All right, and then the other two numbers back there, they have to multiply to positive 12 and add up to positive 7. If we make a list, those are all things that multiply to 12 positive 12 and so if we use positive 3 and positive 4 um, both of those uh, will work because it multiplies to 12 and adds to 7 All right and so if you weren't sure you could kind of foil this in your mind but these two things should be equal right it's just broken apart that's what factored means if you're broken apart okay so we're just going to slightly get more complex this one's got a negative 6 Okay, so now when we factor, we're going to use x and x, but uh, we're going to use one negative number and one positive number. Right? If it multiplies up to negative 6, it has to be one negative and one positive. Okay, and so basically we can do 1 and 6, 2 and 3, and so they add up to positive 1, so I need to use the 3 positive and the 2 negative. Okay, and so that is our factorization, right, um, broken apart. 
that. Let's uh, let's actually try one with two negatives like this to be a little bit different. Pause the video and uh, give it a shot. Again, our goal is to factor break it apart. All right, so I always set them up this way where if it's x squared, I know I'm going to have x and x here. And then uh, on minus 16, so in this case, I'm going to need one negative and one positive. And the negative one is going to need to be the bigger one, right, because it adds up to minus 15. All right, and so hopefully you can tell actually right away, 16 and 1, if I make the 16 negative and the 1 positive, that will add up to negative 15. Right, and that's it. There's our factorization. The only other thing I want to say with this is, you know, as the numbers get bigger, right, sometimes kids get here and they just look at it and they can't figure it out what multiplies to negative 70 and adds up to positive 3 and make the list. All right, so like this case, I know it's one negative, one positive, but if you can't do it, I just go in order, right? One and 70, two and 35. I know they have to be three apart, right? The positive one has to be three bigger. So I'm not there yet. Three doesn't work. Four doesn't work. Five does work. But I'm still not there yet. Six doesn't work. Seven does, right? And those are three apart. So that gives us positive 10 and negative seven. That adds up to positive three. So I can't stress this enough. Make this list if you are a stock factor. Okay, so an important note, this uh, later in this chapter, we're going to talk about factoring when uh, we call it A, like this is AX squared plus BX plus C. And all the factoring doing today works when you have X squared, right? And it works because you can just put X and X here and then find the other two numbers. Right? But we're not so lucky if it's 3x squared or 4x or some number in front because then our factors would have to have like x and 3x and that's going to change everything. Right, The 3x might have to be up here. Um, it's a whole different question if this starts with 3. So sometimes I'm going to call this like long factoring, long factoring or factor by grouping. Right, And so there will be videos later that will talk about how to handle a situation like this. All right. So um, one of the ways to actually handle this, we're going to start going over next, is called like a GCF. So uh, what a GCF is, is it's something that's common to all the terms. So back on this question, like if, if 7 was divisible by 3, one of the ways to handle this through would actually be to bring it to front, factor it out. Right? But uh, it doesn't quite work on this one because the 7 is not divisible by 3. So we're going to start with kind of some simple ones. Um, but it's pull a common factor to the front, and this is called like the GCF or the greatest common factor. All right, so it's just a different way to factor. Remember, factor again just means split apart, right? Split split the number apart. So here, um, you can think like what's common to both of these. So we're going to bring the two, right? Since they're both divisible by two, bring that out. And then divide by two to give us x squared plus four. All right, so it's the reverse of um, distribute, right? You're used to distributing the two in. Here we're actually just pulling it out front. All right, pause the video. Give the second one a shot if you haven't already. A little different because we're not going to pull out a number, but both of these have a times x. So you can bring that times x to the front, right? And then divide both of these by x, and you get something broken apart. All right, let's try a little bit goofier one here. Give this one a shot. All right, so the GCF here, they both have x in it, so we can take that x to the front. They both have at least one x. And then also they both have a negative, and they're both divisible by 7. All right, so we're going to pull out a 7 and a negative 7 and an x. Okay, and then we just got to divide these out. So we're left with just x here, and then negative 21 divided by negative 7 is 3, and the x has been pulled to the front. So our answer here, sorry that kind of got jammed together, but there is our answer. All right. 
So, if you can put all of this together, I got a factor question for you here to try. Again, this would be a good one to see where we're at. So, I'll pause the video and give it a shot. All right, so this is like the first factoring we did. We have three terms, and we're going to make it into two little binomials. What's different is there's a 2 in front, and so in order to handle that, we're actually going to factor out a GCF of 2 first. All these parts are divisible by 2, so this little expression would be equal to what we started with. All right, we can pull out a 2 to the front um, by times 2. Okay, and now we have an x squared, so we're going to factor just like we did before. We have a 2, and we're going to have two little binomials with x to the first, right, for the x squared, giving us the x squared. All right, and then the rest of it has to multiply to negative 20 and add up to positive 1. So we're going to have one positive, one negative. If it's a negative number here, the only way to get that is multiply to negative by a positive. And I believe 5 and 4 will work. Positive 5, negative 4. All right, so this one you had to factor twice. Right? But again, this thing is equal to, right? if we were to multiply all together, we'd be back where we started. All right, one more challenge one for you here. Uh, it starts with a negative. So again, you gotta got to do factor twice on this. So give it a shot um, and then unpause the video. All right, so on, if it starts with negative x squared, Right? It'd be tempting to say, hey, can we just like factor it right away? But we'd need like x and negative x. And again, that's, that's going to be kind of weird trying to factor um, with the negative x squared. So the trick you can use is pull out a negative 1 so that it'll look kind of like the last one where I have negative 1 in front, pull out a GCF that just reverses all the signs. Okay, And now factor... Uh, what remains right now that it's positive x squared I can make two little binomials x and x and then they multiply to 18 and add up to negative 9 so I think two negative numbers there negative 3 negative 6 should work okay and then that thing is our complete factorization with a negative 1 in front kind of like the last one had a 2 in front this one now just has a negative 1 in front so a summary of factoring for today, there's a lot of different factoring situations. There'll be even another one in tomorrow's video. And the first one is when you have three terms, starting with x squared, right? You can oftentimes factor it into two little binomials. And then the other thing you have to watch for is pull out a GCF. And this can happen anytime. A lot of the times the questions in the book have just two terms like this, but certainly that's true of a three-term situation. So if I have a three-term question, three parts, I would always start with, is there a GCF, right? And if there is, bring that to the front, all right? So like in this one, you could pull out a three and then try and factor it from there. It doesn't look like this part actually factors anymore, which is kind of interesting, but at least you could factor out a three um, and then go, and then, then you'd be done, actually. That'd be all the farther it factors. All right. That's it. Um, part one of factoring, there'll be a second part coming at you tomorrow. All right, hope it made sense.